Hello, everybody. It is great to be here today, and I am the host of the Founders Report with Gary Fowler, and I am Gary Fowler. It's great to be here. I'm a 17-time serial entrepreneur. I've been involved in 17 startups, as I said, and two unicorns. I was on the original management team at Click Software, which was sold to Salesforce for $1.35 million, and also Eva.ai and AIH, your tech company that I founded with Dr. David Jang. We believe that intellectual capacity is evenly spread, but opportunities are not. That's why we're here to make a difference. We're here to make a dent in the universe. I'm the CEO, president of GST Get You Done Venture Studios, a premier AI and quantum venture studio located in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. And with that, I have an incredible guest today. And I, I told her right before we got started, I've never seen a CV of 22 pages. But I mean, she's got more PhD work, MBA work, I mean, and and uh, entrepreneurship and investing than I must say anybody I've ever seen in my life. So uh, so I have Dr. Irini Kialubi. Am I pronouncing it right, Irini, your last name? Kialubi. Kialubi. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, and we're blessed to have her here today. Where are, are you in Germany today or are you where are you today? Actually, I'm in Germany. Are you still in Munich and that area? Where are you today? No, right now I'm in Gütersloh. I don't know if you know it. Gütersloh? <laughs> it's Gütersloh. It's called Gütersloh. Do you know the company Battlesman? Maybe. Yes. Yes, they're located in Gütersloh. Gütersloh. Wow. And what part of Germany is that? It's pretty much in the northwest. The northwest. All right. So how did you decide... So, I mean, you, like I said, you've got an incredible background. I've, I'm looking down through and, you know, from uh, the PhD, you started in, um, you know, uh, Nuremberg in your PhD, you went to Warwick. I assume that's in the UK. You went to the UK Warwick, correct? Mm -hmm. For supply chain management logistics. And then your PhD in, in uh, doctor in economics and social sciences. Why did you go for social sciences? What made, did you just one day say, oh, I want to do, uh, I'm interested in social sciences. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, it's um, more related to economics. It's the degree that it's called like this, you know, for example, you also call it a PhD, doctor of philosophy, but in fact, you're not studying philosophy because many people ask me like, did you study philosophy? I say, no, not at all, but it's called PhD. And the same applies for the doctor title in Germany. So it's called um, Doctor in Social Science and Economics, but in fact, I did it in business administration and a bit of in engineering as well. A bit of engineering. Okay, I see production, economics, and industrial. Then you went to the Chartered Inst Management Institute and you got a diploma in strategic management and leadership from the uh, University of London, correct? Exactly. <laughs> okay, and now you're doing your MBA. Do you just like school or what? You're doing an MBA now? Did you like, are you one of those... Uh, persons I remember my son was like that and my and my daughter too they just love school were you like that and get up and say I want to yes. be educated for everything about everything yes absolutely I was like this since I was a child and I was one of those who were sad when uh, we had holidays and I couldn't go to school crazy right <laughs> That's okay. I so you were sad that you would have to have a holiday because you wanted to go to school and are you into the grades or the knowledge? What's the most important? Do you like to compete with other students or do you like to learn? No, I love to learn and I will never stop learning because I'm, a, yes, I'm a person who believes that um, you should never stop learning and um, it's a lifelong journey and it's fun, definitely. And I read a lot as well, you know, even are in time. Irene, what do you read about? Like when you're reading, what do you read about? Are you into space? Are you into, th are you into fiction? Are you into nonfiction? What do you like to read about? Well, I, I love to read a lot about history, in fact, like um, why our society is nowadays the way it is. Lots of about politics to understand how our um, economics functions, how our government rules our world. So this is what really, really interests me. And what? So what do you think? What are the conclusions you come up with? You've been reading a lot. What? Where are we today? And what do we need to do? Okay, that's a very tough question. But in fact, I believe that 
all the conflicts that we have nowadays in society is prone to bad communication. You know, it's on a personal level. It can be also on a business level. Everything that happens nowadays, every conflict, every war, every um, misconception is based on bad communication. Well, here's the thing. You know, now we have the Internet. How can we communicate communicating so badly? Right. I agree with you. You know, I lived in Russia 14 years myself. So I spent a lot of time in Moscow, studied in Moscow State and you know, it's like there's a lot of nice people around the world. And I don't get why we're fighting when we have so many important problems to solve, right? Climate change, population going from 8.1 billion to 13. We need to double the food supply by 2050 to feed everybody. There's a lot of problems that we need to solve and we can do it together, right? It's it's amazing to me, actually. Absolutely. I totally agree. I don't understand because we, at the end of the day, we are all human beings. We need to stick together we have the same objective to live a happy life and that's uh, the most important thing so why do we always need to compete um against one another you know yeah I, I we and we need to solve that problem because if not nothing good's going to happen in the future and i don't mean just about wars i mean you know I, i'm writing a paper right now that if we don't change the way we are nothing will be extinct in 250 to 300 years. And people say, ah, oh, it's crazy, but I'm telling you for real. I mean, you can't destroy a planet. It's like, you know, um, it's like being a fish in an aquarium. You can't take the oxygen out of the water and not put any food in there and, and affect the fish to live. I mean, we need to, and you know something? At the same time, I'm really, I am really, really, uh, on my own standpoint, I am optimistic about the future because I believe we can do it. We just need to, look at the similarities and not differences between people. It's where we can relate and not the situations where we're different. Mother Teresa said it's not about stopping war. It's about pro-peace. Let's figure out how we can work together. And, you know, in the startup community, you work with startups all over the world. So what's, how do you do that? So where do you focus and how do you, where do you believe we can make the most impact? Yes, I believe that we can make the most impact in um, building a sustainable startup ecosystem. And that's where I also see the difference between where you are located and where I am located, right? I work with startup in many different settings uh, with lots of corporation partners, accelerators, universities. I'm also a university lecturer for entrepreneurship and digital marketing um, in the German speaking area. And what we lack is a strong and sustainable startup ecosystem. And you are way, way forward, right? And But I still feel that Germany can do it. Also, Switzerland and Austria, if you are talking about the GSA region. And um, they can take you as a role model, definitely. Well, uh, because... you know, the thing is, I, you know, I lived in Germany for a while. So I did some work in Munich and Paderborn and uh, Waldorf and Berlin. And, and, you know, my my uh, father's family's German, right? So very conservative, Pennsylvania Dutch kind of mentality. Very, very conservative, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, when I talk to my German friends, and we have a number of German, Swiss, and Austrian companies, sometimes they think in a box. You know, and, and I tell them, I guess mm -hmm. you got to think out of the box, right? It's not about the box. It's about how can you address the world and you know, how can you need to take some risks? By the way, it's not just your German, Swiss, and Austrians. You know, today I had a conversation with some French. And the same kind of mm -hmm. thing, a little bit more progressive. But that's what Silicon Valley is all about is think differently. Take a risk. Try. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I have to say, because I, I heard you well, you said that you used to be in Paderborn. In fact, Utah is not so far away from Paderborn. It's like oh. 60 kilometers away from me. <laughs> wow, that's you amazing. With this area. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, I loved it actually. In fact, I've never had, I, when I was in uh, Munich actually, I've never had so much food in my life. I like pasta, but I mean, I had never had the best pasta in the world. You know, I'll never forget, I was in a hot bra and they brought this out and I was with some what, Wiener schnitzel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, it yeah. was really, really good. Yeah. Really good. 
I like the, the the expression that you used when you said like we are thinking in a small little tiny box. That's the issue, right? Because when a startup launches, for example, in Silicon Valley, they want to conquer the whole world. But in the German speaking area, they oh, we first start in Germany, and then after three or maybe five years, we'll go to France or we'll go to the Scandinavian area. You know, Americans think tend to think America and the rest of the world. And oh, here, I really, but we're from my grandmother's Egyptian, Greek Egyptian. My grandfather's mm -hmm. Greek on my mother's side. On the other mm -hmm. side, I'm German, right? We're from different oh. countries, you know what I mean? It's like, I lived in Russia, you know, for long. I lived in the UK, it's like, but there's one thing that's magical about this Silicon Valley mentality is that you can do anything you want. We believe in dreams that you can mm -hmm. do it. And, you know, and also I see those German companies that are progressive. I spoke to, and he might be listening to one of the, one of the, I won't name the name, but one of the wealthiest families in Germany Actually, I guess he's in Austria now, but um, and he said, I want to bring my company over the new company over to Silicon Valley. He said, why? Because there's a lot of exciting things happening there. And there's a way that I can attract other investors and and gain some um, some buy in. And I said, that's what it's about. Right. But that's about all over the world. Look at places like, uh, you know, as you know, in Africa, Nigeria, there's a vibrant ecosystem vibrant ecosystem there right with some of the brightest people on the planet earth but it's untapped for the most part most people don't think about flutter wave or patricia or some of those companies but they're you know you got what 38 countries and you've got over a billion people that are and one of the youngest population in the world under 30 there's going to be change we need to bind together to help each other to solve the challenges you know whether it's minerals whether it's uh, fintech, which they're incredible at. I mean, Nigeria's got what 206 million people, and some of the literally best business people in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. You know, for us, failure failure is not an option. If you fail once, people will not trust you anymore. You know, in the U.S., you can fail two, three times. People will still motivate you, encourage you to move further. Right. So in Germany, there are so many restrictions also in terms of regulations and um, getting funded because many investors are very risk averse and um, they don't have this big vision of scaling so fast, you know. Well, how do you so, you know, you seem to be very progressive. How do you deal with that kind of a mentality when you're in Germany? How do you? Talk to them when you're talking about investment. They're talking about, well, let's do something first in Germany and three to five years from now, let's do. So what do you do? It depends. But most of the time, if I truly believe in the business model and I think they can do even more, uh, I like to tend to say, like, think big. It can get small by itself, you know, because I truly believe if you think that you are um, changing the world for better, go for it. Take the risk because there's no security in life. You know, the most successful people in the world, they took risks. Well, that's if you don't take my friend, that's a billionaire, told me one time. I remember this. I mean, he, he gave me two dice, right? And he put mm -hmm. them in my hand and he said, Gary, close your hand. And I said, OK. And he said, now take those dice and I want you to think about something. He said, what's that? And he said, now. What's the chance of success if you never roll those dice, literally? Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. and I said, well, zero. He said, that's what life's all about, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You never know till you try. And if you don't believe in your dream, you don't believe in yourself, and you don't believe in your networks and contacts, it's mm -hmm. never going to happen. He said, when I built my company, a billion-dollar company, I didn't know it was going to be successful or not when I got started. But... Yes, I had to go down through and create my own destiny, you know, have it manifest. We Absolutely. create our destiny. And it, if you can't do it, it's not for everybody, or any right? It's like not everybody's made to go down through and take risks. It's not easy sometimes. There's a lot mm -hmm. of obstacles out there, and you got to be confident in yourself to go through them, or you shouldn't be doing it. 
Absolutely. I always say I regret those things that I haven't tried out rather than the things that I've done. Now, what kind of things do you do that you like to just because a lot of people like yourself that are risk takers like that like to try different things. What do you do? Are you into parachuting? Are you into flying or what do you do to like keep your edge? I love little canyoning. <laughs> yeah, you can pretty much do it um, pretty well in the south of Germany, mm -hmm. near Munich, in the Allgäu. I don't know if you know it. No, no, no. Tell us a little bit. I'm, I'm interested. Austria. What yeah, do you do? I love it. Yeah. Oh, excuse what me. What do you do exactly? So, what what do you like to do that gets you excited? Uh, climbing. Yeah. And like how high? Pedaling. pedaling. So I love that really much. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's great. Now, when you're climbing, do you, ever, do you think about going up or coming down? If you're going up, <laughs> what do you think <laughs> about you're going to fall or do you think about going to the top? In fact, um, I used to be afraid of hate, but I overcame it through this point. Yes, that's was, great. That's a yeah. great story. I love it. And I, I truly believe, like Aristoteles once said, only the one who overcame his fear will, can totally be free. Yeah, I agree. You know, I had uh, lunch with a guy named Scott McNeely. He was a founder of a company called Sun Microsystems in California. And he told me one thing one time. I'll never forget. It. He said this is a few years ago. He said, always go to areas you fear the most. You're going to learn the most. Absolutely. And he said, most people, as they get older, don't they try to like be more conservative. But what you got to do is you got to try. You got to reach out. You got to go to places. And leave your comfort zone. That's the only way that you can grow. And that's the only opportunity for you to, yes, to make your dreams happen. So what can be done in Germany right now? What are you doing, Irene, to help those companies get out of the box? What do you do? What do you talk to them about? Exactly. So um, it's funny that you're asking this uh, question because most of the time when I start working with them, the first thing most of them say is always like, ah, do you believe that we can scale? Do you believe that we can make it big? Because everyone in my environment doesn't really believe it. And um, they say like, I should take small steps. And what do you think about it? And I'll never forget, there was um, one female founder um, who told me like, I, I asked her like, what is your objective? What do you want to achieve? And she wanted, she said like, I want to be known for my profession in Munich. And I said, like, why only Munich? He said, okay, maybe Germany. And I said, like, why only Germany? You know, they tend to think very, very small. I don't know. Maybe it's um, they don't have the faith in themselves or maybe it's part of our education, how we grew up. And I always say, like, at school, we never learned to, to have this entrepreneurial mindset. You know, we were just raised to um, work as an employee at a company and uh, do everything that our supervisors say, you know, and that's the, the kind of way we grew up and it should definitely change. You know, we should be educated in a way that we can be creative, follow our dreams, do our passion, right? Well, you know, it's interesting because the first MBA was at Harvard University and it was designed to teach managers how to manage not how to be entrepreneurs, because risk is not something uh, managers really want, right? They're they're trying to be risk averse to being sure they're consistent. And entrepreneurship is di not diametrically opposed to it, because if you don't take risk, you're not going to win. Where would it be with Facebook? You know, Facebook, you remember Friendster, mm -hmm. uh, MySpace, he wouldn't have come into the uh, with Facebook if he didn't believe in his mm -hmm. dreams. Google, at the time, kind of out of Stanford. My friend was with them when they were working out of a trailer at Stanford. Look at it now. They changed the world. We each have those capabilities, uh, but we need to really unleash our human potential, unleash those capabilities. All of us has the ability to be able to make a change if we truly want to do it. And the other thing is, you know, we work a lot with female entrepreneurs, Irene. We work a, a, a lot with the dis people that are not served Probably because they don't have access, right? We're all over the world. We need to do that. We need to make this a kinder, gentler place, not in an entitlement way, but a way that we can each contribute to help each other. 
right? Mm -hmm. Diversity in companies makes a whole big, a whole lot of difference. So if you got people of different race, color, creeds, and beliefs, you can change the world because you understand it from different perspectives. You know, as you say in Germany, what is it? I remember Gestalt, the sum of the parts equal the whole, Gestalt, right? In uh, German, the, the, and that's what it's all about, tying all the pieces together. So it's incredible. What do you think? So what's the future of entrepreneurship in Germany? How are you going to make those changes? Oh, I think there's still a lot to do, but we are definitely progressing, you know, because, for example, if you consider like Berlin uh, was the hub spot in Germany for entrepreneurship. However, they tend to um, focus more on B2C business models. And now they have realized that nearly everything has already been made, right? So now um, the ecosystem is also focusing more on Munich because here we have more B2B business models. And I believe that it's a great opportunity for the German um, ecosystem to really focus on B2B business models because um, they have proven it in the past with major corporates um, being located in Germany. And um, that's the area where I definitely see huge potentials. Right. And um, we are more and more fostering um, company and startup corporations. Right. So there are already established companies that are supporting startups. They are setting up entrepreneurship entities in their own companies. And then, of course, you also realize that there are more and more universities um, setting up entrepreneurship programs even um, chairs and institutions have been established so far. So I can see a lot of progress going on there because they now realize how important it is um, for the competitiveness of Germany to really work together with startups, foster innovation, and uh, to be more, um, how do you say, forward thinking. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Progressive. You know, but I will say this. I went to the uh, Pirate Summit in Cologne. I spoke at the Pirate Summit, the AI Summit in Cologne. There was a lot of really forward thinking <laughs> folks there. Really. It was really when, cool. when have you been there? Uh, before the pandemic, right before the pandemic. Me too. I was there 2019. Maybe we were both there at the same Maybe. time. Yeah, yeah, I, I love mean, it. I also really loved it, yeah. Cologne's one of my favorite. Actually, the chapel in Cologne, it's uh, one of the most beautiful chapels, churches I've ever seen in my life. Just absolutely stunning place. Very nice yes. people, too. That's um, close to where I grew up. I grew up in Bonn, and I love Cologne. I always thought that I'd be moving to Cologne, but... In fact, I also love Munich, so. <laughs> you know, Cologne was really, it's like, a, for me, anyhow, it's like, if you think about Germany, you think about a place like, it's like picture perfect, right? With a little lake they have and all the different things. It's like, when I when I would think about Germany, I think about there. Although Dusseldorf was nice, too, I got to tell you. I live, I was there for a while, too. That's a nice city. Actually, they're all nice. Berlin's nice, too, which is a little different, you know? Totally different. You can't compare them. Way different sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some way different things. Although then I went out to um, uh, outside of uh, Berlin to the Kapinski Sporting, uh, and it was just an amazing uh, place. Waldorf, where SAP. I mean, some great yeah. companies, great companies have come out of Germany. And at the same time, there needs to be more openness, more willing to take risk, right? Risk is important. If you don't, uh, support people taking risks, nothing's going to happen. And you understand, listen, you're right. Sometimes yes. you fail, but the situation, you don't go in thinking you're going to fail. You believe you're going to win. Absolutely. And we need to 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 get faster. We're too slow. <laughs> too slow you know? But, you know, because of people like yourself, Irene, it's getting better. And I see it, you know, we work with a lot of German, Swiss and Austrian companies, but I see it's not just there, just so you know, other countries around the world are the same way. It's because they don't understand it and they're afraid to do something they don't understand. They don't know how to build a company. They don't know how to get the legal structure set up. They don't know how to find the right kind of uh, uh, staff to be able to help them out, whether they're building AI models uh, or they're mm -hmm. looking to do uh, programming or whatever. They just they just don't have the resources. They, they've not done it. It's hard exactly. if, you, if you've never done it before. It's hard to figure it out. And most of the time they don't know where to go to. 
who can help them to set up a business, who can help them to get those skills you just mentioned. They need financial legal support, um, so many stuff that we don't learn at school. So I'm always asking myself, um, what if we do, could just say like, okay, we can also um, start this entrepreneurial mindset even with uh, um, little children who are already six or seven years old, right? So that they learn, okay, um, in fact, it's all very skill-based, you know, based on your talents. We should foster talent and not just uh, teach children by the books, you know? Well, I mean, you know, one of the things we do in the States, it's really reinforced. So growing up as a kid, we would have lemonade stands. We would sell lemonade and it was kind of funny, but I'll never forget. We had contractors coming into my area. They were putting up a, uh, putting up a um, uh, wires, you know, telephone wires and all this stuff, electric. And I went out there with a lemonade stand because that's mm -hmm. what we did. And we would charge 10 cents for a glass of lemonade or 25 cents. And I sold everything I had. My mom got so mad wow. at our lemons and a big bag of them. And I made lemonade and it was going like crazy. But we have it reinforced, you know, to, to do that, to be an entrepreneurial. You sell books and you sell products in school to maze running for your class. And it's fun and people compete with each other. And we learn it kind of informally that way. But, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, it's there's a bright future for us all to work together. And with the technical talents, with the business talents of places like Germany, Austria, Switzerland, it's just incredible. But all over the world, we need to come together and to solve the challenges, to help each other, to, to help understand this and fix the infobesity that we all have. But I'm, I'm optimistic that we're moving in the right direction. And it's because of people like you, Irene, that's there on the ground, you know, talking about it all the time, getting the right kind of audience. And, uh, you know, a GSD gets you done. I mean, that's what we're all about. It's not about the talk. It's about the execution. So each one of you out there, go out and get it done. Don't think about it. Don't sit on your hands. Move forward. Life's about moving forward and not moving backward. And tomorrow never comes. Today's the day. Start today, not tomorrow. Exactly. So we're coming <laughs> up to the top of the hour, Rini. So closing thoughts and how do people get a hold of you? Yes, thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation. And I believe that you are the one who's changing the world for the better because you are so open-minded, although you're located at Silicon Valley and um, you're a serial entrepreneur. Yeah, I know um, what kind of work you're doing also for European startups. And um, yes, I got connected with you through a pitch event in Germany. And I'm so happy that you're so supportive. And um, yeah, you're definitely a role model for everyone out there. And of course, you can reach me um, on LinkedIn. And if you need any advice on um, making yourself visible, uh, building up a community, I'm the right woman for you. She is great. And thank you so much. I'm humbled by your thoughts. Thank you for the warm compliments. You know, we just want to make a dent in the universe, as Steve Jobs said, and we want to do it for real. So for companies out there, come, you know, you're happy to get a hold of me. You can reach me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Happy to talk. Check out the videos that we have. Review this, this event today, the podcast today. And I'd like to thank the entire BC Task Force team for making this a VCTV team for making this happy today. Hazmek, thank you as always. You're amazing, amazing person, always on time, always pushing us in the right direction. And thanks for the entire team for making this possible. My name is Gary Fowler, and I am the host of the Founders Report with Gary Fowler. Stay tuned for another exciting edition. We'll be back in two weeks. Take care of yourself, stay safe, stay happy, and most importantly, stay healthy. God bless you.